Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a look at one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs ever known, the Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus was discovered in 1912 by the German fossil hunter Richard Markgraf while on expedition in Western Egypt and described by German paleontologist Ernest Stromer. Stromer gave it the name Spinosaurus aegypticus, which means spiny lizard from Egypt, because of its huge neural spines and of the origin of the skeletal remains. In the following years, Stromer drew reconstructions and wrote detailed notes on the fossil find and gave the fossil remains to the Bavarian State Collection of Paleontology in Munich. But sadly, the remains were destroyed by British bombers during the Second World War in April 1944. Even though all the fossils were destroyed, Stromer's detailed notes and depictions, as well as a couple of photographs, survived the bombing and gave recent paleontologists the opportunity to study the remains. Due to the lack of skull remains at this time, the first reconstructions of Spinosaurus depicted it as a sail-backed carnosaur, that if it were not for the sail would be like any other large theropod. But it was a partial snout described in 1998 that gave some clues to the lifestyle of the Spinosaurus. The skull had a narrow snout filled with straight conical teeth that lacked serrations. It was very similar to the crocodile-like skull of Baryonyx, a known fish eater, and also another dinosaur called Suchomimus. The Spinosaurus was made famous by the film Jurassic Park 3, although it was mistakenly depicted as bipedal. In 2013, new skeletal remains of Spinosaurus were discovered in the Kem Kem beds of Morocco. These remains were the most complete since Stromer's in 1912, and because of this, Spinosaurus could be described even more precisely. These remains indicated Spinosaurus had shorter hind legs and a smaller pelvis than previously thought. This would mean it walked on four legs instead of two. Spinosaurus lived in the mangroves of Cretaceous Northern Africa around 112 to 93 million years ago. Due to the incompleteness of its fossil remains, there are still many areas of this dinosaur that are debated by scientists. One of these areas is the famous back sail. Some paleontologists still have doubts about the sail and what its function was. Some even think that it wasn't a sail at all, and instead the Spinosaurus had a hump for storing fat like buffalo. The function of the dinosaur's sail or hump is uncertain. Scientists have proposed several hypotheses, including heat regulation and display. In addition, it was a prominent feature on its back could make it appear even larger than it was, intimidating other animals. Estimations of its length are from 13 to 18 metres, that's around 41 to 59 feet, and its weight from 7 to 21 tonnes, which makes the Spinosaurus the largest land-based predator ever known. Remains of Spinosaurus indicate it had a mostly aquatic lifestyle, similar to crocodiles, and specialised in hunting fish. As well as its crocodile-shaped snout, which was designed to grip onto slippery prey, it had webbed feet, and its bone density was greater to help with issues in buoyancy. Modern penguins have a similar bone profile. An oxygen isotope analysis of Spinosaurus teeth also proved that it lived most of its life in water. In 2009, it was also discovered that Spinosaurus had pressure-sensitive receptors like modern crocodiles that allow it to detect its prey in the water. But its diet wasn't fully made up of fish. Paleontologists have found pterosaur remains with a tooth of a Spinosaurus stuck in them. Spinosaurus was likely to have been a generalised and opportunistic predator, possibly a Cretaceous equivalent of a large grizzly bear. Being biased towards fishing, although it undoubtedly scavenged and took many kinds of small or medium-sized prey. One interesting theory some paleontologists have is that Baryonyx, Suchomimus and Spinosaurus may all be the same dinosaur. Suchomimus itself is larger than Baryonyx and smaller than Spinosaurus, and also displays the development of tall neural spines along its back. In Spinosaurus, these neural spines are even larger. Baryonyx, however, does not display any special elongation to the neural spines, and this is the main reason why it is currently regarded as a separate genus. However, some paleontologists question this. The Baryonyx holotype was not a full-grown individual. Suchomimus itself was not full-grown, but it was still a sub-adult, thought to have been near its maximum adult size. 
This has caused many paleontologists to contemplate the possibility that both Baryonyx and Suchomimus actually eat the same genus of dinosaur, and that the neural spines did not begin to grow until the individual approached adulthood. Well, that's all for today, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Please check the description for all the links you might need, and I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.